Hello, in this video, I'm going to show you how I made this clock, which in my opinion is amazing, and how I saved hundreds of dollars by doing it myself. The other day, I saw that a YouTuber I watch had a really cool clock, which is this one called the metric clock. So I looked it up to see how much it cost, and I was surprised to find out it was almost $400. With the taxes included here in my country, Argentina, I said, hey, we broke if I can do this for a lot less money. That's why I got four of these, let's say, cells, or they're actually called LED matrices. These are Chinese copies of the original Atta Fruit product, as they are more affordable. And what I did was join them into four, that is, to have a matrix of 32 by 8 colors. As you can see, I followed this connection scheme, which is very simple. And I only need the four matrices, a Wemos, D1 Mini, which is like an Arduino and a capacitor. Now, what I did was get one of these food chopping boards, you know, the typical kitchen boards. In fact, I got them at a bazaar where they sold all things for the home. And I like this wood because it was bamboo wood. I mean, I, I like this finish that the bamboo gave. So I said, let's get out of this situation. As seen in the video, I realized it's hollow, not solid as I initially thought. So, well, I had to leave the part of that ugly one. It looks like it's hollow for the bottom side, and it's no big deal. As you can see, I put the dies on the wood to make a small window, which would be the window where our LEDs will overlap. You will see later on, I cut three identical pieces of wood to stack on top of each other, kind of like a sandwich effect, and give it a bit of depth, even though we don't need any depth because we only need the depth that the matrix has, which will be about five millimeters to a centimeter, let's say, I wanted to give it some depth to make it look more uh, aesthetic, more professional, or also nicer because I thought that being so thin, it wouldn't look very good. Once the three pieces of wood were sandwiched together, I drilled a hole in each corner and put a screw in. This is so they don't move, and I already have a base to work with. I sanded the bottom part, which was very irregular, because I had to cut it with a jigsaw since at this moment I don't have a better saw. But, well, it doesn't matter. It was just a matter of sanding it a lot to make it uh, completely uniform and ready. As you can see, it's a kind of uh, block that has a hole in the middle. This can be done if you have a computer numerical control or a milling machine or something like that. But I had to do it this way since I didn't have any of those things. I sanded it well to give it a better finish. And as you can see, in those slits it has, those small bumps, I filled it with a wood that is a resin or a putty specifically for doing this kind of things. Um, you can buy this putty or you can also gather sawdust, mix the sawdust with common carpenter's glue and fill it with that. A lot of people do that. I didn't do it because I already had the putty and because I didn't know how to go about gathering all the sawdust. Now we're going to print what is the matrix what is going to diffuse our matrix, let's say? What is going to prevent the colors from mixing? I know many of you are going to say, hey, I don't have a 3D printer, this, that, and the other, but it doesn't matter. I'll leave you with that. The file in the description can be sent to any print shop for cheap printing due to the small amount of material required. If you still can't get it, you can do it without this matrix, but it won't turn out as well. You will end up with round pixels, and they will mix with the ones next to them. It will still look good, but in my particular opinion, I don't like it very much. Now we are going to stick the four LED matrices above our printed matrix. At this point, what I did was test different varnishes to see how the wood would turn out. I tested various varnishes on leftover pieces I had used before, in the end, I chose a varnish with a natural color. I was between that and the crystal color, which is literally colorless. It just gives it a bit of shine. Since the bamboo already has a very good finish on its own, it wasn't necessary to varnish it or anything. But well, the truth is that since I had it, I wanted to give it a hand to make it look better. I don't know. Now what we're going to do is solder it. Well, at this moment, I had forgotten to solder the capacitor that I showed in the diagram at the beginning. And um, the truth is that it's just a capacitor in case there's a voltage spike, it's not a big deal. 
but I didn't want it to be missing. I put a small five millimeter pin on it to be able to connect the power supply, which is a five volt and three amp power supply, a very common power supply. And I put the pin on the back at the very bottom to make it discreet and so it's not visible. And now we can put our matrix that we glued before the four matrices together with all the 3D and whatever to test how it looks. Don't put it in permanently because now we're going to have to take it out. But try to make it very tight if you're going to do it this way so it fits tightly and you don't have to glue it or do anything weird because if it's loose, it's going to go inside. And well, it won't work. Basically, and now comes the hard part. We'll connect our Wemos de Uno via USB, which is like an Arduino with built-in Wi-Fi. It has a micro USB there. You connect it to the computer via a regular USB. Please open the program I mentioned in the description, which is to flash the fineware. This, as you can see, says COM port. And when you connect it, a new one will appear. That is, if it says COM1, then it will say, for example, 17. Choose the one that appears when you connect. Then in config, you select the firmware, the .bin file that I left in the description for you to install. It's the new firmware that this watch uses. And you turn it on to test it once it's done. As you can see, it looks bad. The letters are wrong. The symbols are wrong. They are like disordered. This is because it was originally created for another matrix. But since this is open source software, I downloaded it. I edited it and compiled it again for this matrix. I'll include both the custom and original firmware in the video description. In case one doesn't work for you, you can use the other one. I will include the source code for you to modify if needed. And once that's working, we'll move on to another difficult thing. We download this file called autrix.jar, which I also leave in the description. Running it on your PC creates these folders. The apps folder is crucial, and will be discussed later. Now we press the combination of Windows plus R keys. We write CMD and then we write ipconfig. A list like this will appear and you will copy where it says IPv4 address. There, you copy the IP numbers. But doing this with your computer will only work as long as your computer is on. I mean, if your computer is off, your clock will not work. One way to do it is to install it on a computer that is always on or for example, install it on a Raspberry Pi. I honestly didn't recommend it as a first option because a Raspberry Pi is very expensive and would cost more than everything we've bought so far. I mean, maybe you don't have, I don't know, it's not worth it, but you'll see. Consider that buying the Raspberry Pi and everything else still comes out to a quarter of the cost of the original clock. But well, that's another topic. To install it on a Raspberry Pi, Simply enter the command I left in the description into the Raspberry's console, and that's it. Instead of using your computer's IP, use the Raspberry's. Turn on the clock and you will see it says hotspot. When it says that, grab a cell phone and connect to the Austric controller network. The network password is Austric with three X's as I leave it here in the video. Once you connect, an automatically sliding window will appear saying configure controller there you will click, select your home Wi-Fi network, enter the password, and where it says host, enter the IP, either from your computer or your Raspberry. In other words, either of the two IPs, depending on what you wanted to use, we restart the clock and it would be fully configured. Now, continuing with the manual part here is where the big um, trick comes. As you see, it's kind of ugly. But by putting a regular sheet of paper over the entire matrix that we had printed the LEDs go from being round and uh, kind of ugly to being square and totally symmetrical. It's really a very good effect and it's even better when instead of using a sheet of paper we use one of these giant white stickers. Which would basically be the same but since it has adhesive it's uh, easier to stick it and it stays adhered and well. Uh, it's like an extra ease for the project. I actually already had it. That's why I use them. It's not that I went out to buy one of these stickers, but well, it, it's much better because it also gives it a smoother finish. If we want to say, 
I bought a custom acrylic, a dark gray acrylic, to put on top so it looks even better. And as you can see, it wasn't dark enough yet. I could still see the white of the paper I had glued, and I wasn't entirely convinced. So I grabbed a piece of these car tints, the ones that go on the window, the common tints of all life. Uh, if you go to a tint shop, they will probably give it to you for free because it's just a tiny piece. I mean, you're not going to buy a meter to use a few centimeters. And this tint I stick on top of the black acrylic I had bought to put it on. You put a little bit of water with soap on top of the acrylic, stick it on, and then with a spatula or a cloth, you remove the lumps and the little balls and all that. And now I really love how it looks. It's just how I wanted it. I glued it. Let's say I hugged it with one of these sergeants or some pliers or whatever. To our clock, I marked well where the holes in the acrylic were going to be to put some screws in it. And I started to screw it. I used four M6 Allen screws with a big head. I was going to use some that are more discreet, which are the ones with the flat head, but I didn't have any. So I tried this one, and I really loved how it turned out. And um, I didn't want to put them. I didn't want to change them. I said, go, I'll leave it like this. It's done. Another very important thing is that the original clock is 20 by 6 centimeters, and it only has 8 by 8 color pixels, while mine is 30 by 10 centimeters and has a full screen of 32 by 8 colors. Now another crucial point, how do I configure my clock? Well that's really very easy. Do you remember the IP you used before to set up the Wi-Fi and all that? Type the IP into the browser, followed by 7000. This opens a web page with all the settings. The most important setting is the App Store, and all the applications that the watch has will appear to you. Some created by the community and others created by its creator, which is Blueforcer, who is the one who created this free software. In my apps, all the ones you've already, let's say, downloaded will appear. And if you click on the little key, you'll be able to configure them. They're very easy, and each one has its own instructions. Wherever you see it says, for example, icon ID. You will go where it says extras and then where it says icon database. And all the icons that the community created will appear to you. Copy the ID, then go back to My Apps to configure the application you were configuring and paste the ID there. It's super easy. In the description, I'm also going to leave a link to all the original documentation of this watch, all the documentation that the creator put, the open source software, software links, and a discussion forum where you can discuss about this watch. It's really good. I love how it is. I love the pixels. I love that it hardly illuminates. I mean, it doesn't bother. It doesn't uh, create light at night or anything. It's like, it reminds me of an organic light emitting diode screen or one of these ink screens. And uh, I'm very happy with how it turned out. Plus, I only spent about $25 against the video. 